Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the Bull Terrier! Today we meet one of the toughest, most fun, most greedy and most rough and ready terriers on planet Earth. Bull by name and bull by nature. He is descended from one of the oldest English breeds, the Bull and Terrier, commonly used in dog fighting. He is the only dog breed in the world with triangular shaped eyes and his most famous feature is his egg-like head, which has him described as a dog with Marmite looks. In other words, you either love him or hate him. But how about his temperament at home? Has he escaped his historical dog fighting roots? And is he safe around your kids and pets? Today, we will reveal all as we meet both pet English Bull Terriers who live with kids and athletic agility-based bull terriers who are worked and trained to an extremely high standard. We also are meeting the miniature English bull terrier, his cute smaller cousin. So which side will you be on? Oh, and we've got a special discount for Animal Watch viewers on the world's strongest dog crate that's guaranteed for life. So be sure to stay watching to find out more. He's famous for his white colour, his triangle eyes and that incredible skull which looks like a dog that's been stung on the nose by a bee. Classically, he looks like a typical British dog with his stocky bull doggish frame and that classic look which we see in many Brit breeds. He is descended from the Bull and Terrier who was developed in the 19th century for dog fighting and vermin control. However, he's come a long way since his dogfighting roots as he was created in the 19th century by James Hinks by taking this old Bull and Terrier breed and adding English White Terriers, the Dalmatian, Spanish Pointer and Whippet for a cleaner, more elegant appearance and finishing up with some Borzoi and Rough Collie to remove the stop from his muzzle and to create his classic egg-shaped head. However, his image can be perceived as tough and bullish in appearance. There are certainly sleeve-trained and spring-pole-trained working bull terriers online, like these fantastic examples from Working Bull Terriers Kennel, which certainly show that they are very much capable of bite work and spring-pole. But is this all that they are? Or perhaps there is more to this athletic dog breed than first meets the eye. I was intent on finding out if this rough and tumble tough guy was all his exterior presented, or perhaps a cotton wool softy lived and breathed beneath this tough exterior. So today I'm meeting both pet and sporting English bull terriers so we can find out the truth about this incredibly unique dog. First stop, pet bull terriers. I was so excited. I was off to meet the entrepreneur, Ben Billows, the man behind the Bully Billows dog harness empire. We are here today to meet what could be described as the manatee of the dog world. <laughs> Hi, Annika. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Meet Piglet. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, you little sausage! <laughs> Look at her! <laughs> Piglet! Piglet! Oh, roll, roll, roll! Oh, roll, roll, roll! little girl! Hello! Oh, you look very smart in your beautiful harness! Don't you? Welcome in, and you can find out all the, the good and bad and ugly of Piglet. All right, Piglet! Oh, are you excited to see us? Come on, yeah! Girl. Come on then! <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, oh, oh kisses. kisses. I'm so happy. 
you obviously love these dogs very much. I love the breed, yeah. It's the character, is it, that makes you just love them? Yeah, the character, the energy level. <laughs> Look at that! Those beautiful eyes! Yes! She's <laughs> where's that food? Yeah, where's the food gone? Give me that food. <laughs> where's treat? the food gone? Now, Pig was a sweetie, but I was told Pig by name and Pig by nature. Apparently, one of the main characteristics of this breed is the absolute obsession with food. Pig was raiding our kit bags for food, pulling the bottom of my cardigan pockets out to get to treats and trying to grab dog treats off the table. Ben even told us a very funny story about her obsession with food. What an appetite. I mean, I've never known anything like it. Yeah, she's massively driven by food. She loves her food. There's been times where I've had my breakfast in the car on the way over to work, and I've said, Piglet, stay, come back. My breakfast is gone. <laughs> even makes me question if I even picked it up and brought it in the car from home, <laughs> yes. to be fair, because there's no, there's just no traces of it. Yeah. She's had the whole lot. Now, that was way too much fun to pass on, so we thought we'd put Pig to the test and make a special sandwich to see if she had the ability to withhold not stealing food that wasn't meant for her. Let's see how she'll get on. Piglet, I'm nipping out for five minutes. Stay away from the sandwich, please. What's going on in here? Pig. <laughs> Piglet. Pig. You're very guilty. <laughs> now the truth was out. Bull terriers not only love food, their lives are literally ruled by it. But perhaps this love of food was good for training. So we stopped by dog trainer and bulldog enthusiast Kirsty Lewis and her band of agility dogs. Goodness me, who's oh. <laughs> Albie, good who's boy! This? So this is Albie. Albie! So he's a 14-month-old <laughs> bull terrier and he's full of beans. He is, look at him, he's loving that. Weighs 31 kilos. Yeah. But he is actually very gentle on his tug because he's such a super nature he's dog. He's beautiful. Oh yeah, he will jump over the top of Albie, Albie, what's this? Good boy. <laughs> yeah, he, will, he will jump He's over the top of you. He's isn't he? He's brilliant. It was evident that Albie was definitely food motivated too. And this was great, as I'd heard bull terriers have the genetics for stubbornness, like many other bull type breeds. So perhaps food was the key to keeping this stubborn streak in control. But first, Kirsty brought in her mini Dottie to show me the differences between the standard and the miniature bull terrier in size and character. Oh, are you snuffy! <laughs> yeah, she, got... Hello! Hello, baby! Hello! So this is a mini. So this is a bull terrier, brackets, miniature. Close miniature. bracket. Sorry, a miniature bull terrier. Yeah, so you've so... seen the standard and ah! she's an example of a miniature. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still very much bull terriers. <laughs> Oh, she's so fun! So this is as big as she'll get? Yeah, 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 that's and it. And the male's maybe just slightly bigger than this? Yeah, this must yeah. be about 15 inches at the shoulder. She was super wriggly and affectionate and oh, so adorable. And yes, loved her food too. We then compared Albie and Dottie side by side to show the size difference. Adult standard bull terriers can stand up to 22 inches and can weigh between 45 to 65 pounds, which is 20 to 30 kilograms. Their miniature cousin can reach 10 to 14 inches in height and weigh between 23 and 33 pounds, which is 10 to 15 kilograms. Dottie was smaller, but still tough and told Albie off when he started pestering her. 
The solid frame meant that these dogs are tough and made to bounce. The Minis can play well with larger dogs due to their muscle content and nice thick frame. Now getting back to using food for training out that stubborn streak, Kirsty was on hand for some great training advice. In training, a lot of people struggle because they're not a biddable type dog. They don't wake up and say, Mum, Mum, what can I do for you today? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. They wake up and go, mm, what's in it for me? Yes. And I love that. Yes. I love it. And these are very much a why dog. Why should I? So it yeah. doesn't mean they're going to be never going to do what they are. So just why should I? You know, what's what, what's in it for me? Yeah. So it doesn't mean you have to feed them treats the whole time. But but they means, like the toys too, don't they? They like as well. toys. They like voice. You don't have to treat train if you don't want yeah. to, but they like interaction. And they they want to know they've yeah. done something good That's and right. they've made you happy and That's pleased. Right. Yeah. Cassie was keen to show me just what Albie and Magnus would do for her and to show that Bull Terriers most certainly could be trained as long as you use the right type of training and motivation. So this is my spidey little boy, Magnus. He, uh, he's a miniature bull terrier, again, um, and he loves to play agility. So um, we're going to demonstrate some of his agility skills. And he's quite keen to start, as you can tell. Legs, good boy. So he is quite noisy, but when he's working, he's, uh, he's a sweetie. But he is quite, uh, he's quite a cheeky boy. So we will start with the seesaw, and then we'll progress on to the other, other obstacles. Good boy. Wait. Okay, so now we're going to do the dog walk. As you can see, he's keen and off he goes. Now we're going to have a go at the weaves and uh, see if he can give it his best shot for you. Come on, little man. So we're just going to show you a little bit of hoopers. So this is a sport that came over seven or eight years ago from America. Uh, hoops, barrels, so like agility, uh, but it's a course of hoops, barrels, we can have tunnels, we can have a mat. Um, and it's based on the American barrel racing. Sit, go. Round, round, round. Magnus, come, 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 come. Wait, 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 go. Round, round, go. Boy. <laughs> Good boy. Round, go. Round, round. Albie, 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 go. Go, right, 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 right. Round, go. Round, go, round, round. Oh, good boy, good try. Good boy, good boy. It was clear that these dogs were intelligent, tough, playful, and adored their owners. It was also evident that they had had a bit of a hard time being grouped with other bull breeds in the minds of some people. What is your general opinion that you find people give when you go out in public over the years, generally? Okay, so their initial reaction is, oh, you know, ugly. <laughs> or they say, oh, they scare me. Because of the banning of bull terriers in some places in Europe, miniatures are very popular in Europe. Okay. Pretty cam, pretty. So, so um, what, they, they've, but they so ban the standard. Yes. What is the reason? They think they're dog aggressive? They put them in the same genre as the pit bulls. There's been lots of problems with yes. the Rottweiler because a lot of bad breeders yes. got hold of the Rottweiler, bred for aggression, yes. bred from bad genetics. Do you believe that might maybe what happened across um, Europe, that perhaps there yes. was a lot of rubbish breeding for bad dogs? Yes, and also the, the, the media and the, the public pressure on local government to do something about dog attacks um, so they just looked across the board and they and just said, went that looks like it's part of that group so yes. we're just going to put that on the ban yep, list yep, yep, yep. i have to and any owner of bull terrier you have to protect your breed because any dog that even jumps up if that person says i was scared 
you you can have a knock on your door. Mm. So we have to be even more careful than someone with a Labrador or a Chihuahua. Yeah, just simply because of what it looks like. Because what it is. So talking about this dog's perceived image, we were keen to see just what they are like with kids. So we stopped by Ben Billow's neighbour, who had one of Pig's puppies and who apparently shared a very strong bond with her kids. Pola was a classic example of how I'd heard how good these dogs were with kids. They simply adore them. Pola was only 18 months old and she played wild and hard. Whereas Pig, who was seven years old, was now more demure with her play, which would always lead straight to relaxation and downtime on a sofa. being young was also pretty nuts but all in a good way and ran me down with his solid head while playing with me whereas Magnus who was older was much more serene. You would describe these as a very relaxing dog to have inevitably after they calm down from the puppyhood? They are very intense in the house unless you exercise them. They're full of energy, they want to go out, they want to explore, they want to do what dogs do. Her day to day in the house is once she's had her walk and to be honest, I do get away with her now being seven, not having to walk yeah. straight away if I can get away with it at times. Yeah, so she, she will, will relax. She'll chill out. But that comes with age, undoubtedly, and obviously just them getting used to the routine. Yeah. But they are, like I say, very energetic yeah. as a breed. She's gone through a fair few of my trainers. She's run into walls, broken through all sorts of stuff. Yes. Yeah, she ran into a wardrobe, got a new wardrobe, put it up, let her in the room. She saw a reflection, ran into it broke the mirror and ran off. But almost like it didn't phase her, you know. What are these guys like as puppies? A lot of Bull Terrier owners for the first time find their enthusiasm and their playful drive a bit overwhelming. They need so much more sleep than people realise, like 18 hours of sleep. Really? Yeah, 18 hours of sleep as a puppy. When they mature, are they very relaxing to have around the house? Do they just sort of sit there and Okay, watch so your furniture you? could move. So all of a sudden they're all on the sofa and you're having a lovely watch of the film and then they, they're like, oh, I'm a bit bored now. So then they'll do a bully run. And so you just put your legs up on the sofa because it's bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, yeah, crash, so crash, zoomies. crash, bing, 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 bong, bong. Yeah. yeah, zoomies out of a bull terry, which is made of brick. Sort of like and, a bull in a, oh a china shop, basically. Yes. The reality is they're a terrier and that terrier brain needs boundaries. And so it needs to know what you want out of it. Even if you just want a sofa surfer, they need to know that they can go on the sofa. There's their bed, they, you know, at six o'clock they get fed and all this sort of stuff. But they need those boundaries. If you just let a bull terrier choose everything in its life, they can be quite destructive. They'll start chewing things, start getting anxiety because they don't know where they stand. Yeah. Now talking of destructive dogs, Animal Watch viewers are in luck as I've got a special exclusive discount for Impact Dog Crates, claimed to be the only dog crate you'll ever need to buy, and that's guaranteed for life. Now, as large and energetic dog breed owners, isn't it irritating to keep coming back to this? Or perhaps you find it hard to transport large dogs who like to chew your car up. So with that in mind, I'd just like to share with you my new favourite dog pen from Impact Dog Crates, made with space grade aluminium and 99% recycled material. They claim it's the only dog crate you'll ever need, as your dog won't be able to destroy it and it comes with a lifetime guarantee, as they are so certain. Ocean and Kumi have a collapsible version as I travel everywhere all the time and need to transport both dogs and crates. You can even use it to fly your pets as it's certified for this. My crate is huge at 48 inches long and I chose grey. 
but it comes in six other cool colors and sizes. The crates come with military gray handles for carrying, brilliant ventilation, and an easy to carry lightweight frame, which shows here, as it'd be a miracle for me to carry any other brand of crate of this huge size. You can find purchase options for this crate via my special link and code, where you get 15% off selected products. I will also write this link in the description in this video. The dogs I'd met today were definitely fun, 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 but also had a beautiful temperament. I asked both owners what summed up their love of Bull Terriers and the character of the Bull Terrier. These are proper, good, solid working dogs. They are and tell me why they've got under your skin and why you love them so much. Uh, for me, they're my soulmates, absolute soulmates. They are my heart dogs. Um, I was born into them, so um, my father wanted one, my mother bought him Brutus. Um, apparently as a baby I would crawl into his bed, much to my mother's shock and horror, um, <laughs> and curl up and go to sleep with him. I just love the loyalty, um, the quirkiness. Now one of the other observations of all bulldog breeds in general is stubbornness. Yeah. So what is she like when you try to ask her to do something? Is it all on her own terms, do you feel? Yeah, all on her own terms, unless I've got something that she wants. So like, she loves a ball, she loves some food. Right, so you, you could be standing there and just calling her forever and she won't come if you haven't got a bit of food. Eventually she will. It makes my life easier mm. if I have something to lure her yeah. over. How about taking things off her? Does she, is she quite difficult to get the toys off? If I take her out on a walk and she's got a tennis ball, if I've got food, it's an easy option. I give her some food in return for, for the ball back, so we, we have a trade off. Yeah. She is tiny, but she's pocket rocket full of muscle. Yeah, she'll spin around. She knows how to get under the bigger dogs yeah. and hop over the top of them. So she's not worried. She yeah. loves playing with bigger dogs. Yeah. Some dogs get on much better than other dogs in packs. Yeah. Some dogs are better as singular dogs. Some bull terriers will cope with multiple dog households. A lot of them don't. It's very much up to the individual dog. Even in my household, they are, when we go out, they're, they're, they're They've got their own areas. We don't mm. leave them in the same area. And that's my choice. And that works for me. When you go out in public, um, do you let them off? Recall is the most important thing to train, but it's really hard to have 100% recall. And I can't guarantee it. So yeah. I, I'm very careful where I take them. I monitor it. And if I don't know the area and don't know all the exits, then they're on a long line. And if I feel that I need to hold the end of the long line, I'll yeah. hold the end of the long line. But we always say to people with bull terriers, Keep them on a long line, it's just not, it's, especially in this country, it's yeah. not worth the risk. Do you find that some people um, are intimidated by her? People will just avoid. Just not. So if they're walking like yeah. past you, they'll they'll make an, they'll an make extra effort big, to sort what, of stuff if away. If they've got a dog, do you find that's with more or, evident? With or without, yeah. You don't see many of them around anymore. Like every time I go to a public park with Pig, people will approach. Yeah, and well, that's out like, of curiosity. Yeah, just like, what, you know, what, almost like, what is, what is this So people dog? don't even recognise this breed no. anymore? Not many, no. They are so... <laughs> Off she goes to do a bit of guarding. That's Let's... the other thing as well. They are very territorial. Are they? Yeah, so, they, so if, they do if, their job as a dog. So if anybody knocks on your door, she's, she's the first up at to the know. door. Yeah, yeah. What is the best thing yeah. about having a bull terrier and what is the worst thing about having a bull terrier? The best thing about having a bull terrier is you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> and that's probably the best and the worst thing in one, to be fair. Because <laughs> they're just so random, but funny and loving. So, yeah, they keep you on your toes. Yeah, they're a do great they? breed. Yeah, they're wicked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are what they are, and we want them to be that. We want them to be that ridiculous animal of the, you know, as which is a bull terrier. We love it. In conclusion, this was the first time I had met this breed, so I was absolutely an amateur on everything about this dog. They were absolutely charming. They really love cuddling you with their big, thick head, pushing it into you. They love to lick your ears till you scream with laughter. They are food hounds and thieves. They are literally bulls in a china shop. So when you get a puppy, beware if you have low tables with drinks on and any delicate ornaments as they will come down. Your walls and doors could also take some damage. These dogs are mad energetic as puppies. 
but mellow down into very cuddly and peaceful adults. They love kids, but due to their exuberance as puppies, I would keep very small toddlers under supervision, as that powerful skull and crazed energy will take a baby flying. They are dog-friendly if socialised well, and will love a good rough and tumble with dogs who equally like that style of play. They are stubborn, so training needs to include food and toys. It is advised to walk them on a leash simply because as their owner, you owe them that protection that other small breed owners will not share. Owners of delicate toy breeds may not like the energy of these dogs, so pick and choose the dogs they play with with care and consideration. Oh, and watch out for that huge bony skull as they do often clonk people in the nose while playing and wriggling around with you. Finally, this dog is the best medicine and will make you laugh until you cry. They certainly did for me. I had as much fun with them as Bosch the White Wolf, who too likes to climb all over me. Last but not least, they have a heart of gold and adore their owners. They truly are loving and doting companions who will enrich your heart and soul for life. If anybody wants to find out more about her in particular, or any other Bull Terriers, have you got any websites that are associated with you? Yes, yeah, so there's Bull Terriergram underscore, which is on Instagram, which is a parody page surrounding just Bull Terriers. Mm. And also Bully Billows, where you can get all of the, the best canine accessories. Yeah, on so the I mean, she's got a very smart little harness on today, hasn't she? She, has, she loves this. Yeah, so she's comfy in it. So and, they, and, these, and these are quite good for the stronger dogs, aren't they? They're yeah, so they're all, yeah, all pressure tested. And how do people find this website? It's called bullybillows.com. Just dot com. Yeah. Okay, and then you've got that on Instagram as well. Instagram, bullybillows, Instagram, That's Facebook, cool. TikTok, we're everywhere. You're everywhere. So yeah, if you if you fancy yeah. a snazzy little harness or collar for your bull terrier, then you know where to go. And what is your website? Okay, so I run uh, www btac training and agility.com and is this for all breeds or is this just for the bull terrier okay so it is for all breeds it's my training thing but i do a <laughs> annual bull terrier weekend which is amazing and we train them in hoopers and agility and fly ball and scent work and it's just an opportunity yeah. for bull terriers because unfortunately bull terrier people go to training classes and get told that these dogs are untrainable oh but as you can see i yes. hope you can see that they are oh, well, so there you go so if you're interested in this breed that's a good website if you're based in england obviously in the south of england um that that's the uh, website to go and have a look at and um be sure to tune in every week we'll be bringing you more amazing <laughs> episodes on dogs wolves animal rescue and conservation Bye for now. Bye bye. And bye from a very greedy little piglet. See ya. <laughs>